Kayla. Um, sorry for not making videos recently because I had to priori prioritize uh, school events and uh, robotics competitions. Um, so I have not been able to really make any videos. And right, and so far what I've learned from the past, and of course I'm tr now trying to compensate for the fact that I basically failed the March's Honest Challenge by not being able to produce um, at, you know, videos every day, but uh, I'm going to try to compensate that by looking at three lessons that, I, that I've learned. So, yeah. uh, partially over time, uh, and I have made them during the days in which I had competition during the days in which I had school and competition and stuff, and I had enough time to learn the lessons, but I didn't really have enough time to learn, to make the videos. So, first of all is the, uh, I'm not sure how ac entirely accurate this is for representing all of these, uh, I, I refer to them as definite articles, which are like basically like the, the that, this, the, those, these. Which I'm not sure if it necessarily represents all of these, but I know definitely know that these re represent the that and those. I'm not sure about this and these. Um, and of course, you notice that I wrote letters by the uh, declension cases here, like the noun cases. Or, well, th these aren't necessarily nouns, but of course these would be apply function sort of like adjectives to different nouns, which have to, you know, agree with gender. Um, with the gender of the nouns, and the the cases are nominative uh, or nominative, if I'm depending on where the stress of the word. But anyways, nominative um, uh, case is, is basically the subject case. Um, accusative is the direct object. Genitive is the possessive, and dative is the indirect object. So of course these are the variations of the slash those, which of course. Um, the, uh, the Gothic workbook and the, uh, Discord server that I've been on doesn't write the long O for the feminine form of the nominative, uh, the, which is so, uh, but because of what I remember seeing, I just wrote the lines or the macrons, uh, over the letters to represent, you know, what I saw and phonetic value. And also, uh, I remember hearing something about how the... Uh, accent mark, the cute mark there, um, is often typed, but I, or often written, but I, I haven't really seen it typed in the Discord server, and plus I'm not sure how much that really matters, but, uh, of course, someone can tell me how, how important that really is, um, but, but I kind of feel like that the Macron is, is significant because it represents vowel length, um, Anyways, you know, there's the basic ones that actually come from the lesson that I saw in the workbook, which are sa, which is the masculine, the uh, thata, which is uh, neuter, the, or that. It actually looks a lot like the word th that, or is similar to the word that, and it's actually related uh, to it. Um, so, feminine, I already told you. And, of course, the, we have the plural forms. I'm not sure if the dual forms have anything... Uh, uh, different because there's also dual, which is basically you know for two nouns or like two people or two things instead of just the regular plural, which is for three plus. Even though, of course, plural, you know the uh, third, you know person like like say third person pronouns they don't really have a you know dual case. They just have the plural case. Meanwhile, first person and second person uh, pronouns do. And of course, there's those variations which are. Uh, fe, or the, tho, thos, and those, are th those, and of course we have all these variations uh, down here. Uh, um, of course, here are some sentence examples: that name and address, thato uh, and of course we don't got the dozen where you have a word for a uh, or an. I mean, technically, if you want to count one, which is ain or ain's or ain, depending on the gender of the noun following it or it, that it's attached to, means one, but you don't really need to say that. You just say the noun, but, which, Gary's thoughts, is, uh, you know, the noun address. And, of course, there's 
chair, which is a masculine word for some reason, uh, that chair, sustos, uh, booths, or sub booths, which is table. All right, and even though, of course, they're all the nouns are gendered, I'm not sure, you know, they're not really related to actual biological gender or anything, it's just, you know, how the words work grammatically. And of course, there's room, which one can uh, think of something to make that feminine, but otherwise, you know, it's a feminine word, and the form of the that you would use is so, so, so hath yo. Then, of course, there's father, or which is ata, so that father will be sa ata. Um, and there's mother, or that mother, so ethi. Um, then there's sahuns, which is the dog or the hound. Um, so gatwa, which is, I actually have a list of words over here, the street. Well, and I wrote, even though the lesson mainly showed that, I decided to write the, because at least it, it will be translated into that too, depending on context. Um, right, and of course there's some adjectives. That I've learned scans, which you know, it would otherwise be written as scana or scan, depending on the gender. Like this is the masculine um, version of the ad adjective for beautiful. There's mikils, big logs, which means either long or tall. And of course, like I learned, the dog sahuns, um, and then maragus, maragus, sorry, which means short. Then you have some more sentence examples from, you know, another part of the lesson. You know, why is sustos? Where is the chair? Where is the stool? It, one can think of it that way. And there's variant others. Um, and of course, you see with some of the questions that don't have words like what, where, or or when, and like you know, what, which means where. Um, and, you know, question verbs like previously shown in other lessons and other videos um, have the letter U that follow them. And I learned a new verb. Well, well not new, but, you know, I've learned the declension slash conjugation. Well, actually, not declension. That declension is not the right word. Um, that, that's just for adjectives and nouns. But this is the conjugation for uh, to have. Uh, which haba is I have, um, habos, which means we, as in we too have, so we, we ta habos, if you want to emphasize that it's we, as in we two people, you know, have it, and then there's wees, uh, habam, or we have, and there's habes, habats, habeth, and then the interesting thing is, Thing is that the second person plural uh, form of the verb uh, for have is you, know, you you all have or you have is the same as the conjugation for the third person for the third person uh, singular which is habeth and there's haband and then haband again which okay the thing is like I said previously I still wrote that in to compensate for the table however. Uh, third person, like I said, doesn't really have a dual form, uh, at least not out of what I've seen. Um, and then I learned a new word, which is uh, atha or or. Of course, there's some more sentence examples for you know, haba ni habes, you know, I have, you have not, and then pretty basic examples. All right, then I continue on. Um, which I, I was already familiar with the you know phonetic values of all these letters, and you actually saw me, you know, looking over what I wrote in this alphabet. Um, and of course, I learned the names of all these letters. Um, now, of course, I'm kind of having some trouble with axa, which of course means axle, according to Axto in his video about the. Achsa Berka, which Berka means birch, and that's the word for the letter B. Um, it, the thing is that I remember seeing 
in other sources where Achsa is referred to as Achs or, or Ans, which Achs means ash, which kind of makes sense, and it kind of relates to, you know, the Futhark names for, you know, the letters. For example, you know, Ans is similar to Proto-Germanic, I, I believe it's Ansus, which, like, probably is related to, you know, Old Norse Asir, which means, you know, God, or, or gods. Well, Ansus, I think, by itself just means God, and Ans means one single god. Uh, but not necessarily the god of Christianity, but, you know, god in general. Um, but Or some sort of deity in general. And Ans meaning ash as an ash tree. And speaking of trees, you know, again, Berka, birch tree. Um, th then there's Giva, or, or Giva, yeah, trying to run out, I probably stress, I stress that wrong, but I'm just kind of emphasizing that some, sometimes uh, B, when in between the vowels is pronounced, like, it, it's similar to V, but, you know, between your lips, like V, Giva, which means gift. Um, there's dogs. I'm trying to pronounce that G, kind of how Achsto pronounced it, where it was kind of a guttural v sound, um, which means day. Um, then there's use, which probably means you or, or you tree, or maybe not you tree, but you know you. But it, we're uncertain of what that really means. Um, this particular Gothic word means, but it's you know this is the equivalent of the Gothic equivalent of the letter E for, like, the A sound. Um, and what we run that kind of looks like the letter U, but isn't. It's actually the Gothic equivalent of the letter Q, uh, um, which is Quena, or millstone. Um, then there's Z, uh, Azet, which means easy. Then the Huggles, which means hail, or Huggles. Um... Thuth, good, which I've also seen as, I believe it's Thornis or something. It, it basically, the, the alternative, that means thorn. Also similar to the uh, same letter in, or, you know, a similar letter in it, the runic alphabets. Um, then there's Es, which of course is written as E-I, which makes the E sound, but, it, you know, it. this is just the name for the I, which makes the E sound it, not only in Gothic, but in most languages in general. Um, then there's Kusma, which maybe means mumps or boils. Laos, uh, uh, Mana, Noths, Yeah, Us, and the Oryx, that's, if I'm pronouncing that right, is an old extinct, you know, cat form of, you know, cattle, which, which is sad that they're no longer around, but that, but that's the name for this letter here, and it was probably written during the time when those still existed, or at least, and you also see that a similar name in the runic alphabets. Then there's Petra, which probably means pearwood flute, another letter which has no finite value, Reda, uh, Saul, or Saul, Teus, Winya, 